What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Perspective. Today, I have, um, I've noticed lately I've been bringing on uh, more repeat guests, and I don't know if it's just because I'm incredibly lazy or because I I really enjoy talking to them. It's that, That's a, a dumb question. It, it's obviously because I love, there's a few people that I really love chatting with, and conversations are easy. Like, uh, I figured I was talking to the other day where it was, there's certain podcasts you do because we get a lot of people that reach out to us now like like yeah. podcast uh, agents i guess that like are trying to book people on podcasts um and they're always pitching people i'm like i, I really don't want to talk to a stranger like that's not that's not that's awkward and it's not fun for me and anytime i've done it i've realized like 10 minutes in i'm looking at the recording light to see like how much time has gone by and uh. i'll be like it's got to be 30 minutes by now it's like eight minutes I'm like <laughs> Oh shit! I gotta, I gotta spend fifty-two more minutes talking to this person, and I really not interested. I have nothing to talk about, and it's like a forced conversation. Um, so whenever we get to chat, it, it's fun, it's natural, and it, usually we we end up going way over time. So let, let's start with the most important question: Who are you voting for in the election? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start every I'm going to start every podcast that way and see if anybody actually wants to answer it publicly. No, no, I, I, I agree with you. This is, I mean, I'm an Orange County. California born and raised white guy. So I, I, I believe at, at least when I walk down my street, it's like half an hour. We have Biden, we have Trump, we have Biden, we have Trump. And I, I voted uh, Trump last time. So I'm going to stick with my vote that I did. And I, I believe from what my initial research, whether it's premature or whether it's not, um, or whether it's thorough or whether it's not, he's been very good for, for businesses. He's been very good for business specifically. So I, kind of superstition in the sense of back when I was playing soccer, I always put my right boot on first, then put my left one on, right glove on, when I was, my gloves, left one on. I voted Trump. This has been a very good year for me personally. I'm going to go vote Trump again to see if I can get one more good year um, into the books because, and this is, I'm, t- I'm turning 30 in like three or four days, I think. No, the 13th, uh, next week. And there's a lot, a lot of reflection that's happening at 30. We had a couple goals that I really hope uh, I hit. I hit one of my major one, which was I missed one, which was I wanted to be Forbes 30 under 30. As soon as I dove into like how you actually get that, I realized it's not all what it's cracked up to be. And the other one was like a financial goal that I set before 30 that I was thankful I was able to hit. So I, I, I can't believe you actually answered the question. That was a, totally a joke question. <laughs> to start it's okay. It's okay. I, I, love, I love the honesty though. I think it's um, it is interesting that like, I don't think there's probably ever been a time in history where there's been so much fear around, I want to say fear, but like hesitancy for people to, to answer that question um, yeah. out of retribution. And I'll, I'll just, I'll say one thing that we can move on to politics. Cause again, like I just, I was thinking today, like, what can I ask? Cause I'm, I'm talking to Josh after we're doing back to backs just cause the baby's coming. I'm trying to knock out as many podcasts as possible. Um, it could happen any second right now. So we might have to cut it off. Um, is like, what can I ask that would just really throw people off? <laughs> I love the hat, the cross promotion there. Um, oh, I'm going to have Josh just put on a beard, like a fake beard while he's doing his, his interview. Um, you know, he did, he did do that. He, when he visited me in person, he really he put on a fake beard. Did he? Yep. Next Josh time he should have to grow, him. grow an actual full one. Spend like yeah, it, nine months before he sees you again and then just grow the whole thing out. This man couldn't grow a beard. Uh, he could probably pay for like a beard, but he couldn't grow a beard if he tried. He just sat there and just did. Like a beard transplant? Just add it on there and be good to go. But the um, yeah. the politics thing, I did a um, uh, training for Depeche's uh, event that he did. And yes, um, yeah. And oh, yeah. See, we talked about this too. So you got looped into this whole comment chain. And I've been, I mean, listen, we own a e-commerce brand that sells collectible conservatives and it's geared mainly to conservatives, uh, you know, people on the right, um, yep. it has a lot of products, but it's, you know, it's in that market. And I've spoke about it for years, like since 2016, when we first kind of did the, the Trump coin thing. And I've never had any issues. Like I've never, I literally, I've talked about it on the big stage. I've talked about it everywhere. Yeah. Never, never had anybody say anything. Maybe people thought to something, but they never like publicly said anything. And you saw the comment threads. Like this woman was like, as soon as I heard what he was selling, I was disgusted. 
and like instantly, not only instantly stopped watching it, which is totally fine. Like that, it's, I have nothing against that. But then yeah. was saying like, I'm debating whether to buy the entire live stream featuring like 50 amazing speakers because of that one thing, which is just yeah. like, that's insane to me. That, 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 that is completely insane to me. It's, it's one thing to like say, I'd never want to hear from that one person again, or like, I'm not going to support them because I don't agree with that. I mean, that, that's still a little, a little out there, but like yeah. to then extrapolate that to say, I'm not going to support any of these other amazing human beings who have volunteered to share all the information for free because yeah. of one person that happens to own one e-commerce business that happens to sell a few products to a per group of people that I disagree with. Like that, that's the, it's interesting to me, like that, look, Larissa and I were talking about this other day. There's such a, a, a mutual hatred. Like it's, it's, it's gone beyond like disagreement, which I think it used to be. It used to be like, Hey, like I believe in free market capitalism and the other person might believe in, well, I, I believe more in a socialist type economy. And that's like, we can debate yep. that and disagree on that. And that's cool. Like I believe this thing, but if you believe in socialism, like I disagree with you, but I'm still going to sit down with, I would love to have a talk with you. I'm not going to say like, you could even be my friend. Like, I don't care to the point now where yeah. it's like, this person doesn't even, it's like secondhand. It's like, I don't share those views. I just, I'm an entrepreneur. Like I happen to have an e-commerce store and, but like I'm selling to people who like the real people, it's not like, like we're selling some like black hat type thing. That's bad. We're selling like real collectibles, U S currency. It just happens to be a viewpoint that you disagree with, but it's like this, this world now where it's, if you disagree with me, you are fund. There's like a universal fact now. It's like, yeah. my information and everything I believe is actually true. It's no longer an opinion or belief. It's actual fact. And if you don't agree with that, not only are you wrong, but you are also a terrible human being who should burn in the pits of hell. And I don't want to live within a thousand miles of you. Like it's, it's bizarre. And like Rich and I talked about this on the last episode for about 30 minutes. Like yeah. it, it scares me a little bit thinking about how the algorithms are continuing to feed into both sides and how further and further and further they're going like i don't know what it looks like in in a few years i certainly don't know what it looks like in in a few months when the election comes out and they realize like hey actually it's going to take 12 weeks to figure this thing out and it might take longer than that go to supreme court and you just have two parties like two sides of people that just are like quarantined angry jobless and also hate each other that now yeah. like you're just like let's let's just do some crazy zombie land thing and just go to go to war. I, I, I don't know. We're, we're living in the, the weirdest time ever. I know this has nothing to do with marketing. Well, it does a little bit because the psychology of it, but like, yeah, the weirdest, weirdest time ever. Like every day, it seems like something crazier happens. Well, even, even for like any conversation we have, and obviously like when we're talking to brands or our or, or clients on this, and I, I know I share a viewpoint on, and I won't go into blogs because I'm not I'm not the most intelligent person there. I'll stay in my lane. But we we went into a, an internal discussion because obviously on, on our team we have four partners. We have four partners. Um, we have our email side, and then we have obviously uh, the social side. And I was I pitched Nicola last year, right? Like I pitched Nicola to to be like head of performance. I wanted I want that brand. I believe in hydrogen. I believe in moving forward with um, you know, the world. I believe in uh, I, I'm a Tesla driver now because I didn't want to get any other option. I didn't, I, I was a Prius to Tesla. So I'm super all in on, on this. And in California, I think I'm pretty sure Newsom said we can't sell uh, gas power cars in 2035. Yeah. Like that's a real, that's a real thing that's going to happen. And we can't deny that. So when I was, when I was blessed enough to get the nod to do Nicola, my partner, which I love him to death. He was like, listen, the, that goes against my morals. Like I don't, I don't support what that founder was doing. And this is referring to, to Trevor, who's now no longer the partner there, or sorry, no longer still a co was a founder, but no longer part of the company. And I go, listen, I, I believe in what they're trying to do, like the mission behind the purpose and you, that viewpoint of like, I don't like what he's done. I don't like this. I don't like that. I go, it's not a matter of what he's doing. It's a matter of like what his team is going to do. And yes, he might be at the lead of it, but ultimately like, I, I believe in this mission holistically. 
it was against the morals of, of my partner out of respect of like no problem we'll pass on it or we'll, we'll, we'll look aside to it so been able to kind of give them a little bit of insight and support them but everybody has an opinion as long as you come from a respectful place fuck dude that's why that's why we jump on these conversations that's why we talk about whether you're running philly whether you're running e-commerce whether you believe in selling alcohol and you don't you may not drink we don't i don't i don't drink a lick of alcohol yet i have beautiful gifts that people send us that's going to sit here for the rest of my time until i have a, an occasion to do it right um that's that's why we live in america is we're, we're blessed to have an opinion yeah it's um it's interesting and and i don't i don't know what the future holds like i i don't i've been thinking a lot about this lately like five years from now 10 years from now 20 years from now like if there's even a a place to have normal rational conversations like i think there's still a few places that exist but it's um it's it's challenging right it's it's a challenging place to be and it's it's frustrating looking at it from the outside as somebody that's like a, a student of, of marketing and persuasion and somebody that like we do this for a living like this is pretty yeah. much all we do is figure out ways to change consumer behavior and how to make somebody think a certain way or want a certain thing they might not have wanted before and i don't have an answer like I, this is a question i asked rich i ended with it was like like what would you do like if you could flip a switch like how how do you convince people on these extremes to not even switch sides like that because because then it's, it's you're not really solving the problem if all you do is move from far left to far right to far right to far left like that doesn't solve the issue but like yeah to be able to be open to having diverse opinions or like not set in stone opinions right like it's this world where it's if if i am on one far extreme or the other i instantly without any information agree with every single yeah. viewpoint in that alignment that's, that's like that's crazy it's like we would never we would never do that with anything else like this is something Lewis right. and i were joking about like think about it this way like what, what's your your favorite your favorite musician that you have like one of your favorites currently yeah i think uh post malone is one of my favorite musicians post malone amazing so but that being said like do you love every single post malone song that's ever come out no like, no not at right it's on live i was like that sucked and same thing with movies like it's who's your if, you know if whoever your favorite movie director or actor is it's like yeah. like like if you're if your favorite actor is nick cage right nick cage has been in a lot of great movies he's also been in some of the worst movies ever made that should never been put on a screen for public viewing <laughs> so it's like could you imagine like just hey i don't care what it is if it's got nick cage in it um instantly it's my favorite movie of all time and I, i'm or with a musician or with an author with anybody it's like we don't have that viewpoint in anything else in our life but there's groups of people that have that viewpoint with politics it, it it's strange and um and i don't I mean, know how even, you fix it even to, even i'll cover you on this one like us in this space we've i mean six seven years we've been doing this for a long time like this is why james and i built geek out like i want to sit there and have conversational debate and have a mutual understanding like you're a very intelligent person you're a very intelligent person how do you feel about a b and c like i want to facilitate like an eco like an echo chamber of people that have respect for each other but are not afraid to go like that i think that's bullshit what are you doing over here that that's constructive like that's how that's iron on iron that's the whole um sit with the, sit with the people that's going to challenge you and, and improve you and you if you were to ask me like okay what what to expect coming q4 like if we were to turn this into like how does this going to impact what we're going to do like i'm i'm not going ignorance is bliss like we're we are making plans we're pretty much going early i've kind of talked about this on depeche's thing is we are going early i would say like the last week of october early november because i do believe as soon as election over elections over like when november 2nd 3rd 4th yeah. it's going to be a lot of noise of article sharing and finger pointing and celebration and 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 frustration but then it's going to be like that platform people are going to be glued to facebook and instagram nonetheless to see all the shit that's being shared and i believe user engagement is going to go through the roof which i want to already buy all that inventory in october and right or right now all the way through the beginning of november i think we are and some people are going doom and gloom because of what was the article i read yesterday about the amount of people that are unable to to unable to pay rent in the most in heavy metropolitan cities like vegas la chicago and a couple like a couple other states 
Yeah, I know. For for a major part of uh, consumers, like they are having troubles and they're not able to 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 pay for the bills. I don't know. There's some people electing to choose to not pay for those versus they don't have the ability to. There, people are still buying shit, man. People, it's an American tradition. We love credit. We love to put fucking ring it up. And I know that's going to happen. We're seeing it right now. Now, I don't think you should sell seventy dollars shampoo, but if you have something that's going to lend itself towards the traditional shopping like you are not going to want to cancel christmas especially with all the shit that's happened this year and the turmoil and potential loss of family members potential like cancellation of wedding like i had my brother's wedding last weekend it was scheduled for italy in a in a beautiful beautiful villa we did it in his now wife's backyard yeah polar like what are you going to do but guess what made it the best is like we're with family and nobody's ill and nobody's sick we had to choose that so i think even coming into what we're about to, to, to experience right now, like checking CPMs, checking um, how campaigns and things are performing, we're in that weird dead period um, before the holiday kicks off. I'm not, I'm not fearful. I think we're going to be in a very, very good spot. And I know you could potentially speak on a little bit on the affiliate side of how things look. Yeah, definitely. I, I and it's a good transition out of the. Uh, I, I didn't plan to talk about politics at all. And that's that the whole start of that was supposed to be a joke and then move into Q4, but that just took us down. A, I'm, I, 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 always, I always have fun talking about it. So I, I'm glad they actually answered it because I think it was a lot of interesting stuff there. But yeah, I mean, it is weird that the consumer spending, and then we'll talk, we can talk about what we're seeing performance wise in Q4 so far. Um, you're, it, this really weird place where you have a huge chunk of people who are so far behind in bills because they, were unemployed for several months or they're still unemployed and they're yeah. just buried, right? Because just because the government basically said like, okay, you can't foreclose on people or evict people doesn't mean that you still don't have to pay the back rent, right? So it's it's there's gonna be a lot of struggle there. But on the flip side, it's like anybody that tried to buy a PS5 or Xbox knows how crazy things are. Like yeah. I literally was, I was True. on, you know, Best Buy, Amazon, like all the sites for PS5 when that was, they, they really messed that one up trying to get it, couldn't get it. And then Xbox, same thing, 11 AM when it came out. And I was on, you know, Target pressing the add to cart button 75 times until it finally worked because the site crapped out. And it took maybe 30 minutes to buy it because the, the cart kept failing and then it went to process payment and stuff. Like that's a, a $510, $520, whatever it is, console for video gaming. Like the, the fact that both these ultra premium, you know, kind of luxury goods. You don't need them. They're not, they're, they're not essential goods are selling out in like two minutes. Yeah. says to me that, you know, either things are not as bad for a lot of people, which I think there's an argument to be made that there's a huge chunk of people that have done better in the last, you know, six plus months than they did for the last six months or a year before that. They made more money. There's also the, the, argument about like saving grades even people that were kind of in the middle maybe weren't doing as well but they were saving a lot more cash the savings rate tripled from the average yeah. up to like 30 percent over the last six Solid. months yeah. so you have people saving cash you have a group of people that are doing a lot better the stock market's at record highs um anywhere to participating in that you have more people participating in the stock market through like robin and all these apps so people that are not traditional investors that were getting these huge gains in apple and tesla and stuff um but there will be, I mean, like once all of that government protection on foreclosure and evictions runs out, whenever that happens, whether that's, you know, three months from now, six months from now, like there's going to be a mass flood of people getting evicted. I think it was something like 16 to 19%, I forget the exact stat of like FHA loans, first time homeowner loans are like more than three months behind, which is pretty wow. crazy. Um, so those people, you know, get get kicked out right and and the banks take the houses back and they go into a short sale um so it'll be interesting yeah I, uh, I think we're i think for what we do i don't know if we see a huge change I, I don't i don't i think it's positive i think even if there's a net decrease in total sales for q4 i think online still sees an increase because I think almost all of those losses come from brick and mortar. I think you mm -hmm. see like if it total volume across the board combining both goes down, which I don't even think it will go down, but if it does, the shift in offline to online is gonna raise online way above where it was 
last year because you think like who's going to go out after Thanksgiving dinner and stand in the line with 300 people at Best Buy to then go in a giant mob into Best Buy to get some crazy deal when they can just stay home, stay safe, get the same exact deals online. Plus like behaviors already changed. Like this is the thing I think a lot of people miss is it takes a long time to change consumer behavior, right? Like taking somebody that is very resistant to shopping online or using Uber Eats or whatever these things are, right? That takes a lot of time for those late adopters to mid adopters to start doing these things. That's why like adoption curves are so long. Yeah. But when you force people to do something for like six months, you basically shrink that adoption curve, which I think is what happened. I think you basically have huge chunks of people that probably would have taken another five plus years for all of them to get on board with, you know, using Amazon to shop and doing Postmates and Instacart and all this stuff of groceries have been forced to do it for months. So now it's become part of their routine. Their behaviors already changed. So I think those people that would have gone out and shopped in person are like, hey, you know what? I kind of like this Amazon thing. I kind of like being able to buy it at home. Some stuff shows up the same day. It's super convenient. I get a better price. My groceries get delivered. My food gets delivered. Anything I want gets delivered. Like, Why did I ever go out and leave my family on Thanksgiving to stand in line for five hours to get a $20 waffle iron? Like, I don't know. Some people did it, right? So I, I think that's going to be a huge shift for, for at least Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Well, even brother, all the way through that, like for us that have been spending on some brands, for any brand, really, for any brand that's been spending significantly, you've been acquiring and reaching all net new consumers for the past six months, people that are just trying to jump in online. So yeah. now you should have a pretty, pretty sexy email list to kind of milk towards, or at least an audience to, to kind of build and remarket towards, irregardless of whether you're spending more money in October or not, you probably already spent more cash than you did the year before the year before during summer moments right unless you're a brand that does well in summer naturally or a product or or, or a service that does well in summer naturally you're probably going to have a larger pool to to dip back into which people are definitely forgetting i know we're very heavy top of funnel acquisition dudes but man there's a lot of people that already know about your brand already comfortable with the brand experience and i talked a little bit about this right when it came out i think um on the uh with the affiliate team with chad you had the church accelerate a lot of these older demographics that are having to put their credit card in, having to sign up for PayPal to put donations and for them to feel comfortable with that. Oh, I'm not going to lose my, oh, I can't speak to that. I, I feel comfortable giving my information. I feel comfortable making a purchase. I feel comfortable making donations. That now is is norm for them. And my mom streams her, her services on Sunday from her computer, right? Like, they put it on the TV and they, they watch it from, from the comfort of their home. And it's not community focused, but they're still getting the word and they're still getting um, everything that they were hoping to get if they were to go in person. And I I believe that's that's normal now. I, I believe that's not quote unquote new normal. I believe that was where we were going to get anyways. You and I have all seen those stats of the acceleration of e-commerce in the past just X amount of months. I don't believe it's going to slow down. And even, even with us on the influx of brands that are going oh shit, I have to move my money online versus I have to make that extra purchase. I'm, I'm thinking heavily on like CTV. Like how do we start focusing on connected TV and where does that play top of funnel? Because we, you and I both know like third-party data, it's been difficult to get a lot of that onto Facebook now. They're getting rid of like the, the, your, your look likes or some people are saying turning to shit. There's a lot of other interests that might not be there and keep sweeping them away. Where's the data providers that we can tap into? Honestly, that's on... That's on CTV. That's on overlayered uh, contextual data that we're able to now use as grabbing new top of funnel potential customers. So for me in 20, 2021 and the 2020, like I'm pushing as hard as I can on how can I get into CTV with some of our brands. Now, barrier to entry there is there is a minimum of cash you have to spend. It's around 50 to 100K. So it's not for everybody. But for those brands are going like, where do I put my money versus doing pop-ups or versus doing potential wholesale or, or buying in stores at CTV for me. Yeah, no, I like that. And I, let's table that because I have a few more Q4 things I want to talk about, but like sure. future future mediums, I think that's an interesting conversation, connected TV, smart speakers, all that stuff, AR, VR. Um, what are you seeing discount wise right now? I think the one area I can see people getting really burned with this year specifically is the brands that pushed 
discounts real, real heavy during the pandemic and are still pushing it because they've had it like out of necessity almost. They felt like they need to to keep keep people buying, at least for mm-hmm. certain certain categories. To me, that's always been one of the areas that people when I've had you know several students, a good amount of students over the years that always say, "Hey, well, Black Friday or Monday Q4 is never really that big for me," and when I dive deeper into their businesses, one of the things like I usually find that connects the thread between all of them is their heavy discounters all year round. Mm. And if you're discounting 30, 40, 50% all year, 24 seven, there's no real sense of urgency to buy during, like the reason Black Friday or Monday is such a big time of year for retailers one is it's obviously there's a contextual aspect. There's a seasonality aspect. There's like the emotion and energy. Like I'm supposed to buy now. People are more actively shopping versus passively. Um, but the other one is the big deals. It's you have a lot of brands you really love that you usually maybe can't afford or don't want to splurge on during the year, but you know they're going to have a big sale. So you wait and you wait and you wait. And oh, cool, brand A that I love. They're doing a you know 50% off for the next 12 hours. So they're going to buy one, get one, whatever it is. But if people go to your store and they see, hey, they were doing 50% off last month, two months ago, and that's all they're doing this yeah. time. It's like, I really don't need it. Like, I'll wait, I'll get it maybe next month or something. Are, are you seeing anything like that? Or what are your thoughts just in general on discounting throughout the year, deals throughout the year? Yeah, I, I mean, outside of this year, we usually, brands will have three or four major moments a quarter, right? Like Q1, what are you gonna participate on? Whether you create your own holiday or you're gonna participate in the one that's there all the way throughout the year. I think for for the brands that had to go discounts, it really ca- it came down to them like life or death. Like they didn't have a choice. They had to push that discount to move inventory. So right now where we're pushing those that have done discounts in the past and what they're looking to do in Q4, we've worked with them to be focused on, can you do a limited edition for those that spend a certain amount of dollars? So we're still gonna keep the discount there because there are gonna be uh, new customers. It will be a, a top of funnel play they are going to be including a free gift if you're spent uh, X. Now, you have to check the margins on that if it makes sense to ship it. Uh, we're also doing something that's unique that most people I don't believe are doing. First customers every hour, first, whether you do three, five, 10, 15, whatever you can afford to do, first customers are getting either a free gift or uh, a, a unlocked discount or um, some sort of like gift card that they can use at another time. And that way we can push every new hour maybe they want to come back and try to win that for them. Something that people aren't doing as much. You can even do just when site goes live or sale goes live, the first couple of people that are rushing into it. And we've seen some really great results. We ran that for back to school time. And that's probably what we're going to stick with. And then we have brands on the other side going like, oh shit, we ordered way too much inventory. What are we going to do? That's a buy more, save more. So it's going to be the tiered discount against AOV, a little bit above AOV and then significantly above AOV hoping that we can pump um, selling some of that inventory because whether depend, depending on how well their prime data goes, they're going to look uh, to do that. But I, I'm with you on that. And we have one brand particularly that runs an evergreen discount top of funnel. And I was like, listen, we need to move this off the dot com. We need to put this onto an acquisition landing page that it's the same thing. But the only way you can get this is if you're a new customer. Like, I don't want that to live on top. I don't want them to live there. I do believe that you need a, a free shipping threshold or some sort of evergreen offer, but it doesn't necessarily have to live on the site. That's another way of getting around this. Yeah, I, I love the um, that like real scarcity push there on the front end. We're, we've, we had actually planned for, uh, for our collectible brand is like, yeah, when Friday sales go live, Monday sales go live, having the first, you know, 100 people, 200 people, getting special gifts, special bonuses, yes, and making it. Yes. And then also I think the other thing you can do is open things up early just for customers, right? Start start previewing things to your existing customers. Start giving them some insight into what's gonna be big for this time of year, what new products you're launching, what special deals, all that stuff. And then let them know, hey, you're gonna get, you know, we're gonna open these up six hours early, 12 hours early, 24 hours early. And we have a limited number of these special gift bundles so, you know, if you get in early, you get a chance to get it. If you wait till the sale goes live, there's going to be, you know, a handful left, maybe none left. Um, so there's a lot of ways, I think, to get get your audience primed. And like that should be a huge chunk of your, pro- you know, maybe not your revenue, but your profits for Q4 yes. should be your customers. Like I think that that's the, 
when you're looking at the economics and math of running like a D2C e-com brand, so many people just so they get so focused on day one. They get focused on what's happening right now, my acquisition. And they're not factoring in like even if you're breaking even, right, acquiring customers. And again, like obviously we want to make money acquiring customers, but even if you're sure, breaking even sure. and you're a company that sells a product that is very giftable, that's a great type of product for Q4. If you're acquiring 10, 20, 50, 100,000 customers throughout the year, you can have a massive Q4 just with your customer list, right? You have 60,000 customers, you have their SMS, you have push, you have messenger, you have you have email, like, I mean, that's a huge profit generator. You've acquired the customers, now you're just messaging them special deals. Um, and yeah. that needs to be factored into your, your acquisition strategy all year. I think a lot of people under acquire leading up to Q4, and they don't have a really big list to go off of. So they're they're doing a lot of cold acquisition on Q4, which again, you could still make a ton of money with cold, yep. cold deals and stuff. But like if you have that that big list to go for, like I know even without Q4, every time we do an SM, we do two SMS sends a week for new designs and new products come out. Every SMS send, we're doing between eight to twenty thousand dollars with just our existing customer list. And it's growing every you know, Crazy. every week because we're acquiring more customers. Like that is, and you probably and you probably could segment even more. Like you oh, probably yeah. could be like way more segmented. But you're, yeah. you just see the, you hit the button and it prints. Yeah. So I mean, there's so much opportunity to just think a little, a little bigger picture, a little longer term, and and not waiting until second week of November to start doing stuff. Which is, I think, that's why the biggest mistake I think most marketers, ecom store owners make with Q4 every year is waiting till it actually is Black Friday, like the week before to start doing anything. Like you might not even get ads up. You you might submit ads, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday night and they don't get approved till Saturday or Sunday and you just miss the entire weekend basically, which I've seen happen to people. Right. Oh, but dude, this is you and I I've, I've I've heard horror stories of this stuff too, especially as the agency because we're hoping all year long we basically at least the way our deal structures are Q4 is big for us in terms of opportunity to scale like all my guys get hungry. Um, that's how they get most of their bonuses like how much can we spend? Where is the success at? And we're, we're a little bit uneasy right now because we do know the attribution window for some of our brands is going to close down. So we're looking at, we're trying to make decisions based off of last Q4 of, yeah. hey, Facebook was X amount of revenue. It was X amount of total purchases. What can we envision it's going to be this year? And it's been so difficult in giving them a projection as to what they could forecast or what they could project and what ad spend could be because it's not the same. It's You can't even use six months of previous data, right? You have to use, okay, what did you do in September? What did you do in October? And I would say anybody else listening right now, you have a Halloween holiday that you can lean into to try something. Even if it's a two day, even if it's a week and even if it's something, if you have an idea of like what you potentially want to run for a Q4 that week, those four days, whatever you, you're thinking about before you get into kind of, kind of Christmas, um, X days of Christmas, if you, whatever you want to call it, you should definitely run an offer to set yourself up to potentially run that same one or change the strategy coming into to Q4 or sorry, coming into Black Friday, Cyber Monday week. It's a must. Like you have to take that win and roll it into the next one or else you're just running so blind because last year's data the year before isn't going to be there. And I'm pretty sure Facebook's deleting all that information anyways. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And then it's just about getting getting your, your finances in order, getting your accounts in order. Like, it's, you know, we've been, we spend a good amount of time just continuing to expand credit lines, talking to Amex, talking to our banks, making sure that we we know exactly what we're willing to spend. We let them know, hey, we'll, you know, pay this off every few hours or every 24 hours, like just making it very clear. Because the last thing you want to have happen is not be transparent with your your banks and with your credit card companies. And you might spend on average $10,000 a day. Now you're spending $100,000 a day and they freeze your your cards at you know 9 9 a.m 10 a.m because of unusual spending and now you're down again for the day or not properly getting your account limits increased on your ad account so you're like holy crap this i'm crushing it like this morning's been amazing wait i'm at five thousand dollars man at five thousand dollars for an hour two hours why is it not spending anymore it's well you didn't yeah, increase yeah, your, yeah. your limit from 5k right some people might never spend more than 5k during the year but like during black friday Saturday, monday they won't spend 10 15 20k you need to do all these things ahead of time like we, we got crushed last year because we, we had just started performance. It was a new part of our business. We never, we never done it before. And one of our network partners approached us with a, 
like a, a burst campaign. And these are pretty exciting. We're going to do a lot more of these this year, which is basically rapid growth D2C brands that want to move a crap ton of inventory and do really, really big. So they offer like a double CPA and do a crazy deal and they bring on yeah. you know one or two performance partners to help scale. So we were able to do this with a company called Makeup Eraser. And so, yeah, it's like their CPA on average, I think it was like 25, 30 bucks. They bumped it up to like 60 bucks. They also were doing 50% off site wide, plus everyone got bonus gifts on like a $20 product. It was an amazing, amazing deal. Wow. But they came to us literally a few days before Black Friday with this. So we had to scramble to get ad accounts set up, to get things launched, to get things going. And like on Thanksgiving, we were only able, like we hit that 5K because it took Facebook a little while to get as a brand new ad account to increase our limit. Right. So I was running, like I set up three ad accounts. I was firing new ad accounts. So by the end of that weekend, I was running 10 ad accounts for the same offer. By the time Facebook, I think by Sunday, increased the limits on some of them to like 20 or 30,000. But by then it was like, I was already running 10 ad accounts. It was a, it was a mess. It was, we made a ton of money, but it was way too stressful, way too much work. Like we should have just oh, been man. one ad account, two ad accounts, maybe scaling up hard there instead of spreading it across, across, you know, 10 plus ad accounts. So there's a lot of stuff that, that can be said for planning and thinking about the boring stuff. The boring stuff can make you a lot of money if you plan for it. Uh, understatement. I mean, we, we went through this in 2017, 2018 with pup socks is like, I would, it's that case studies everywhere. It was, we spent so much dang money. We were on the phone with uh, head of Amex and Facebook's like billing team. And like, Hey, we have to send this wire now or else you're not gonna be able to spend enough. And it was extremely, extremely frustrating because you're going, fuck, we, we had it all planned. We we're spending the money. Everything's crushing. And you literally are handcuffed. They won't do anything for you. There's no urgency. Facebook's collecting so much cash during that time. So it didn't really matter. Yeah. That's always the, uh, I think Facebook, probably the only company in history that like, you can literally be a multi-million dollar customer, multi, you know, tens of millions of year customer, and they could care less. Like they literally do not care. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like, uh, okay, well, in the time we've been speaking with you, we've actually made 20 times what you spend all year. So we're, we're good. Well, you know, here's what you need to do. And if you don't do it, like, well, wish you the best of luck, go use Twitter. <laughs> yeah. go, use, go use Snapchat which, or something. Which doesn't work as well as they, everyone suggested it does. No. So on that, on that note with like, go use Twitter and go use Snap, like, what do you, what do you think the future holds for, for Facebook? Like I've never, and I'll preface this by saying, I, I don't think there's been a company in history, again, going back to this, this never, like Facebook's been a first for a lot of these things, like a company in history that is kind of universally hated by every party that uses it. The users hate and complain. The governments around the world kind of hate it and complain. The advertisers that use it kind of hate it and complain, yet it continues to make more and more money and get bigger and bigger. Like that's kind of unprecedented to me. I don't think there's been a company history that's like, that's every component of it other than maybe the shareholder, but even the shareholders kind of are, are angry about like the way the stock structure set up Mark Zuckerberg and stuff. So we can add them into it. So shareholders, government, users, customers, all kind of dis, at least moderately dislike or are frustrated with the platform. But there's no real, I know people talk about other channels and stuff like, the, yeah. Sure, native, sure, snap, sure, TikTok, sure, Twitter, like red, like whatever you want to throw in there. Like, yeah, you can make money there, but like there is not a another platform out there that at least I've seen or experienced that can be used and set up as quickly and scale as much and be like taught as simply. Like I, I just doesn't I haven't found it if it's out there. And so I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if like if it really takes a a new medium, right? Whether that's VR smart speakers becoming a dominant player and there being a, a new co in that market that has the first mover advantage that builds on something really big and that something like that eventually competes with Facebook because it might be too late to the game. They might try to acquire somebody. I don't know what, I don't know what happens with the platform. Like there's no incentive for them to improve it or, or make the quality better or address any of the issues. 
I mean, dude, it's I'm I'm in the same school of you as I wish Facebook wasn't. And we get our, our media buyers ask the same question. Like, shit, what about reporting? What about the CCPA? What about attribution going away? What about <clears throat> them bringing the, the getting rid of the text rule? What about the ad account just deleting data? What about the Facebook pages below two? You can never run from it again. What about uh, you can't run different domains? What about you can't rotate links? Like all these things about people saying, what do you, what, what can't you do? TikTok ain't going to be there, right? No. Nope. TikTok's not going to be the one. It, Snap is so situational and it, very funny because every time you go, every time a product comes in, I have to go, okay, let's run it on Facebook. Oh, but this also may make sense to run on Snap. You don't do that with Facebook. You don't go, oh, this may make sense on Facebook, but let's 100% run it on Snap. Yeah. Like it's always the other way around and you can't ignore it. Like I, I've been so against doing um, like a, like a Nick Shackleford course. Like I've never, never once wanted to be like, all right, that's what I want to do for, for whatever reasons, right? And I d I've done partnerships with ISEC, I've done partnerships with the founder, and I got approached to do another partnership and I'm going, okay, I actually believe that it makes sense after I've been doing this for about six or seven years, that there might need to be some sort of like digital thing that I have to put out there because it's not going anywhere. Like I, I thought I would make it and to be done, but it, if anything, you're gonna make it and every six months you're gonna have to change it or update it because that's how fast this stuff is moving. So I firmly believe Facebook's going nowhere. It's going to turn away from what is your platform performance look like to what is overall MER or what is overall site wide look like? How good are you at tracking? Where's your creative? I mean, you you know this, and I've, I've dove so deep into the creative side of things. We built a whole whole damn team that just makes creative. If you can understand like the psychological pulls, it doesn't matter the placement. Like you just have to kind of get the ad add parameters or the way it fits on on whatever you're, you're positioning it you should get similar outcomes like it's just the same thing repurpose over and over um, and for facebook alone we're still going to be primarily specialists in facebook we're still going to be um yeah we'll run some snap here and that but there's nothing dude i don't there's nothing that i see in the foreseeable future that's going to replace this if anything facebook's going to continue to integrate the integration with shopify no other brand has it. I think Pinterest has it slightly, and I think Snap has it slightly, but it's not going to be as as thorough and as and built out as Facebook is. There's no no chance. Yeah, and that's that's the problem right there, right? It's that there's if you're Facebook, there is zero incentive to change what you're doing, right? Like every few years there's this mass rising of users that say, you know, delete Facebook. I think delete Facebook's probably trended 30 times over the last decade, probably more than that. And, and nobody deletes it, right? Like nobody's, maybe people stopped using Facebook, but nobody's deleting Instagram. Nobody's gonna stop using Instagram or WhatsApp or the other platforms that Facebook owns. And it's, it's all one and the same. So yeah, I don't, if you're Zuckerberg, there's absolutely zero incentive financial or otherwise to do anything that's being requested. Like there's just, it's, Hey, we could take away, like, how crazy is that? Like, Hey, we can just start mass taking away interests and behaviors and audiences target. We can just on mass start changing the policies and rules and make it 10 times harder for advertisers to, to perform. Well, we could just like on a whim one day decide we want to change the interface radically of something and break everybody's ad account for 48 hours and then not refund them anything. And they're all going to stay after complaining and yelling and getting angry and venting groups. They're just going to keep spending more money. Like it's crazy. Like it, it's, it's, it's unprecedented. And I, there, there will be like research papers, books, like there already have been a ton of books, but like about this specific thing written about for, for a very long time. Cause I don't think we'll ever see something like we're seeing with Facebook where it's just like, they have such a, I, I, monopoly is a hard word. Like the, the term monopoly and like legally classifying monopoly is a hard thing to say, but like in our world, it's a monopoly. Like it's there, there's no, really at the end of the day, monopoly is like, if you, if there's no other company that can compete with this company because of how dominant they are, right? And that, that's like, that's Facebook. Obviously that's not the legal, I can, somebody else can go with the legal definition of monopoly, but everyone knows, right? It's a game that you play at McDonald's once a year and it's, it's fun. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, I don't know what you do. It, it's it's frustrating. It's challenging to not have a, an answer, right? Like we wanna solve problems. And especially when people 
are asking you in the groups, and I'm sure you see this all the time, you get tagged with questions. For sure. Hey, like Nick, are, are you are you seeing CPMs increasing? Are you seeing volatility? My ROAS just dropped. Like, and you want to help people, right? You want to be able to give them an answer. But lately, like a lot of times, there's not really a an answer. Like I found my I found a trend in my group at least of the answer I'm giving people is less and less an actual answer and more just me sharing what I'm sharing right now. Like I used to be back in the day, be able to say like, hey, well, you're doing this wrong. Like if you just start doing this, results will stabilize. If you do start doing this, you'll you'll solve this problem. But now it's like, we're all going through this. Like there's, there's no solution, right? It's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like here's what you can try, but the chances of it actually making things better are, are slim to none, if that. Yeah. No, this is, you're kind of touching right upon it. Like as a, as a loose figure in the space, as someone that like really, really does their best to stay as relevant as possible, I, I get these questions. I'm like, fuck, I need more context. Like I need to know exactly how you're running, where you're running it to. Because we, I have plays. Like I have plays that we can make, but it doesn't mean it'll solve it. It'll just get you closer to figuring out how far off you really are. Yeah. Right. And then nine times out of 10, I'm going to be like, can you send me your ads and what page you're running towards? And I spend more time on that end versus the structures or the campaign builds. Now, if you have, for instance, with almost all of our ad accounts, if you're a product centric brand versus a market centric brand, or yeah, those would just use those two examples. The product centric brand, we're most likely going to have each campaign broken out by angle or, or potential a discount or sale that we're running for that brand, for that product. If you're a marketplace brand, we're pretty much going to go skew by skew and campaign build. And the only nuances here is like where we're starting. Are we doing creative testing? Are we doing audience testing? Or are we doing uh, bid testing? You really have those three things to play with. And those structures go either ABO or CBO. That's literally it. And we have a brand new, we have a brand new buyer that came out and joined our team. And he was like, oh, I've never been able to use like these buttons. Like before I would just like, do this and just lowest cost. And I was like, man, there's so many ways of setting up an ad account. And it's so many ways of like doing it wrong or so many ways of doing it right. Like there's no rule book. I have ways to start it and have ways to troubleshoot it, but up, it's up to you to make the decisions on when, when you turn this off, how do you scale this? I have the templates of the documents for you all, you all to use, but it comes down to just pure human analysis. And that's why I, Tools like Magix or tools like Rebelbot, AI Target, they are great at drumming up what's happening, but it's still going to be a human that's going to take a it's going to take a creative idea or it's going to take a personal opinion based upon what they've done in the past to make that next decision. You can never going to be full AI decision making. I firmly believe. Ooh, yeah. So I, I my camera just went uh, went You're down good. for a so second. Gotcha. Can you still see me because it's black on my screen? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it's weird. In, in Ecamm, it's uh, it's not showing oh, up. Ecamm, Ecamm gives me so much trouble. Yeah. Let me um, let me just pause for a second. Sure. Okay, so so we're back. I had a little technical difficulty. That's the problem of uh, of doing something with a brand new piece of technology for the first time live and not testing it. Is uh, something is guaranteed to break. Um, so, be. I, I totally forgot what you were talking about, but but I wanted to chat about some stuff anyway, so we'll use it as a transition point. Um, what do you think about the future of like where content's going to be consumed, where people are going to be playing and be entertained and engaged, and and how advertisers can operate in there? And, and specifically, what I'm talking about is like places where the traditional means of consuming content no longer will exist, right? So for a very long time, the interface has been a a display of some type, right? Whether that was a piece of paper that had information on it in a newspaper, whether it was a magazine, whether it was a TV screen, and now whether it's, you know, a Mac or an iPhone or an iPad, right? Like if you start having more and more people using smart speakers, using other other ways to kind of get information, that totally changes the way advertising is is done, at least the way that most people in our space do advertising. So I'm curious, like if you've if you've been testing anything in that space, you've dabbled in it, like what your thoughts are about it. And sorry, I was I was going in and out of muting because the dogs are having no, a no nice problem. little rope fight right here. Um, <laughs> are we all done? Everybody all good? You want the rope? Good. Uh, dude, and he's trying to say hi real quick. So you can see the real guy. What's up, dude? Yeah. Hey, it's okay. I love you. 
Um, <laughs> it's got more play. So, I, bro, I would say like, kind of, kind of what I was alluding to. We are, we've been, we've been without, we've been without. So, so mean, uh, dude. These bulldogs, they just, it's this a sound or a fart all day. All day. All day. We have day. candles running 24 seven because <laughs> like you're walking like, what is that? Nope. It's a candle. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, I will tell you this. We are diving head first in a connected TV. I'm, I'm early on it. I'm learning about it. The guys at steel house are teaching us a lot about how to make this, how to, how to, whether it should be cinematic, should it be a little bit more salesy. How do we go about that direction? Because we're, we're getting from the brands is, no matter how many times a refresh will look like, no matter how broad I get, Facebook is echo chambering all of our ads to the same damn people, right? For whatever reason, I can go as broad as possible, target anything, and my frequency is still going up, 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 up. Yeah, we're seeing that too. I can have exclusions on point. I can do anything. I can do all the things that uh, my brain tells me to do. And I'm going, where do I find these other people? Even if I go to other platforms, they're going to tell us, oh, you can reach X amount of new consumers there. Sure, but I want, I want potential buying consumers. I want... 29 plus 25 plus that I've cash to spend. I don't want to go figure it out on TikTok or snap. Right. I, I don't want to do that. So for us, that's we have to learn native. That's we have to learn, understand cold email to cold acquisition through email to understand the flows of trying to sell them through content or nurturing that list. And that's just lead gen to, to e-commerce sales. And I think connected TV, like we've been without actual television for two months and we have we have netflix we have hulu we have espn plus um and our family just kind of shares it like we have everybody has their own logins i don't i don't look at tv as anything i go on to as many streams as i can possibly find if i want to watch nfl i'll we'll take a stream so i believe that the transition of where content is going to be at is per device like i do believe it's going to be a per device thing and i think it's going to be a lot more if I only want to watch sports, if I only want to watch uh, reality TV, if I only want to watch Disney, like I'm, I'm going to that thing and I'm going to be in that ecosystem because Disney, they haven't built enough platform. I mean, they have enough users now. Where does that ad platform going to go? Netflix, why don't they have that ad platform? I know obviously Hulu, Roku, and those, the rest of those other things, you can do CTV content there, but you're going to be in ecosystems similar to Peloton, right? Peloton, has its own ability to create its own apps. Yeah. Why not? Why the, why the fuck are people not going to be doing that? And you're going to start seeing like a, a consistent, you're going to start seeing like things being sold on these platforms that echo the consumers that are, 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 are there, right? Like why isn't ESPN selling or adding in buy now features of sports memorabilia 24 seven or products that kind of assist there? That's the direction that if I was in charge of the world of e-commerce or the world of digital, the world of advertising, I'd start having each platform be its own way of consuming or potentially selling products. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think that's an interesting place that we're going. You're seeing with Uber Eats having an ad platform, Instacart, a lot of these yes. apps that are realizing, like, hey, like we're not going to be face, as big as Facebook, but we might have you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 million people that are on here for a very, very specific reason, you don't really need any real targeting options. I mean, you can have some basic stuff, but like if it's no. people on Uber Eats, like they're there to order food, like it's there, it's intent based. And so you kind of have this play where it's like intent, like search, but not, it's like, it's sort of like the, the passive kind of feed type advertising. And I think that'll be that'll be really interesting to to see how that evolves going forward of, of a lot of these apps and and kind of smaller niche ecosystems creating ad platforms and piggybacking on the success that Amazon's had, Walmart's had with their with their ad networks, but doing it in a, in a, a smaller scale or even just with like groups of podcasts, right? There's lots of podcasts yeah. out there that reach a lot of people. Like, and I know there's some networks out there that have kind of aggregated, um, that have aggregated the different topics of podcasts, but... Yeah you know, making that more robust, I think will also be interesting. I, I think podcast is a very interesting ecosystem too, because you, they act as their own little networks of people that are talking about like-minded stuff, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're here for motivation, like if you are a specific type of podcast, you are going to grab a specific type of consumer, which means you probably should sell specific type of products. Hard stuff. Yeah, 100%. 
So then what happens with the, um, with like other mediums, right? So that's still kind of display based, right? What happens with like speakers, smart audio? What happens with VR, AR? I think obviously we're so ways off with VR, AR. I think that's been a pipe dream for a while, but eventually, I mean, you have enough of the big companies working on it that eventually that becomes a reality. Where do you see ads going there? I think it's going to turn into, I mean, we, I'm an Oculus user, I'm an Oculus owner, and I, I love, I love that experience. And you and I both understand, like, we are very social beings, but we know that we can be social from right here, right? Yeah. Like, how can, how can I build an yeah. experience that's close enough to real that I can control my own, like, hey, I'm not saying like, I'm going to take the blue pill or the red pill, and I'm going to jump into it and be like, oh, Babe, but talk to me in a couple hours. I'm going in. Like, I'm not trying to jump in like that. But I would love to be in an office with my team, log in. Like, everybody knows where we're at. Kind of like there's there's a couple of apps like that. Slack doesn't do it so well, but there's another one where you can see like people in different rooms when they log in. But I would I would be the first person to put my entire company through a VR situation where you have multiple screens. It's one one device, and you have a keyboard that operates it all, just for ease of use. Like. If you didn't have to plug anything in, if you didn't have to have a, a, a setup or a room that's dedicated to your work office and you're like, all right, I'm going to go work, but I need to be in that mode of, of working, that just simple put on it and go. I would love to be – love to be. shit, if I can sit in my Tesla, have it drive itself and be at work, hard check, 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 check across the board. Um, but it, it to me, it's – similar to what you're saying is it's a pipe dream i haven't seen anything really built on it unless you want to do gaming which i know gaming uh, leads a lot of this industry i just don't see it coming at least for the next five years maybe 10 years do you do you think advertising like translates into that environment without it being oh, like beautifully well let me just i oh, have one caveat there without it being like so overwhelmingly in your face that pe it pushes people away right that, that fine line because it's a little easier to like ignore um ignore pop-ups and stuff when you're on your computer because you're not like inside your 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 field of view is different it's not as intrusive like you're scrolling through your feed photo ad photo ad stuff if you're you know you're in a virtual you know world and it's like go walking down the street but instead of like every so often you see a billboard it's like some dude pops up right in front of you, like Billy Mays pitching something, right? And then there's another yeah. Billy Mays and there's 20 Billy Mays and they're all, you know, pitching you a ShamWow or something. Like that's that's my concern is is how how that dial's turned of like, it can be super personal and effective advertising, right? I think there, there's some really crazy like minority report style personalization there that can happen. But there's also the opportunity to just completely destroy it and piss people off by being like overkill. I mean, we're we're we, we're about to turn into a Black Mirror episode right now, dude. This, for the longest time, I've wished that there was an ability to, as I'm driving around Hollywood or driving around these these beautiful homes, to just like put my phone and go like, what does this person do? Just to see like, what's their occupation? What's this? What's their net worth? Like, I've always wanted that ability, um, and I think it's it, the only way VR advertising or AR advertising works is through an intrusive means, right? Whether you're Hey, I, I want to buy a spot. So anytime someone goes into their refrigerator, that it's giving you an ad that's showing like their product in your fridge, like that ad units will start to turn into like actual placements within the home, actual placements within the car, actual placements within, um, I, I guess I, you would call it the real world, uh, real world at that time. I can't wait for that. I cannot wait to be the person to be buying ad units on like someone's kitchen, kitchen counter going like, you definitely need my protein. Or like you're opening it up and you're like, well, this is not my approach. I didn't buy this, but it's it's a figment. It's not real. I would love to see how that works. Is it intrusive? I think so. I definitely think so. Yeah, and that's that's like the trillion dollar question is do do most people really like this, but publicly dislike it because it's the thing to say? Or do people genuinely dislike where advertising is going? Like that that's yeah. the big question. I i personally, and I'm sure I can guess where you fall on this too, but I'd like you to share. I personally think that most people 
prefer the where advertising is today over where it was before. I think most people genuinely would rather have personalized ads. They'd rather get discounts when they visited a store and didn't buy something. They like what it's done today, but they're, you know, data private. They're, everyone's speaking about data privacy and it's my data and you, you, the advertiser, I shouldn't be the customer and all this stuff, but they also don't want to pay for it. So uh, I think in the long run, people, pref- most people prefer the benefits of where advertising has gone and that outweighs the, the kind of cons and drawbacks of less transparency, less privacy. Uh, I don't know if there's a tipping point though. I don't know how elastic that is. I don't know if there's like a certain point where it gets so creepy and personalized that people are just like, screw this. I'll go back to getting totally random ads. I just don't want to see somebody's face pop up above my bed at night in my smart bed, pitching something, some dream app or whatever. Like, I, I don't know where that, where that line is. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that you can draw a line on that. I think it's like, I hope I hope we're we're still in the game at that level, and and th- it, we get into some sort of like beta. And I would be the first person to volunteer, losing as much money as as humanly possible to find out how we can start selling products in a VR AR world. Because I mean, I, I was I was a huge user of Pokemon Go when it first came out, and man, we were at parks doing shit that I haven't done in a very very long time. And I believe it could be very similar. If a brand, if you create something that it's entertaining and educational and it 